There's only a couple alive on the point right now for the San Francisco Shock. Super is axed. They're going to use Transcendence to keep him alive so that he can Primal, so he can self-destruct. They've switched Sinatra over to the Zarya. They're probably looking to head to point two here without some heroics. Yeah, without no, without any grabs to worry about. No, no problem there for Violet using Trans. Violet dying to Yakpung, though, isn't going to help things. Sound barrier thrown in here by Moth. Shock just trying to burn as much time off the clock as possible. Pulse gets eaten, but Yakpung still finds the kill. Super out of it with the help of IM37. Yeah, just messing around on the point now, trying to get as much time off this clock as possible. Try to get their own ultimates up. Toronto's gonna take this, and they're gonna have some really important ultimates incoming. EMP for Envy can just win fights alone, depending on who you get in the follow-up. They also have a Nano and a Soundbird to commit. You have to imagine the Nano goes to Yakpung so we can get to a Shatter. Some teams have been Nanoing a Tracer, but now with IM37 switching to Zarya, that's not gonna be enough. I kind of wish that we could see that Bastion set up again. That was so much fun the other day. Yeah. I mean, yeah, unless you're playing into it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's really fun to watch. It's fun to watch. Yeah, the Shock could do it. I can make that work. I right. Envy. He's going to go for aggressive here. He's probably going to translocate up top and try to get this EMP going. Of course, when he's invisible, I'm actually just going to put pressure on the point and locate out. All right. Wow, this is definitely all-out combat. Envy finds the kill on Violet. Kick things off. Sound barrier's worn off on the side of the Defiant. <laughs> oh, somehow, with the help of Arkansas, I'm getting the kill there. Defiant, it feels like they had an opening. They could still potentially press forward onto the point. Not quite picked up a tick progress yet, but they are trading back and forth right now, and that is not going to favor the Defiant in the long term. Ah, uh, then Moth just dislocates the two on the point. Clean up at this point is all it's going to take for San Francisco to hold on. San Francisco able to do so while still maintaining ultimates. Architect switched briefly to the Widow in a moment of desperation. Now goes back to the Brigida. Could not have two different heroes than Widow and Brigida. You can see his, his natural instinct. He's like, I, I must shoot heads. Get on Widow. <laughs> the rest of his hero are like, no, please. Check we need the Brigida. San Francisco's reset their ultimate economy, though. You look at those check marks up top. They've got grab, they've got shatter, self destruct in there. Violet's got his way to another transcendence. The only one lacking is Architect, of course, who switched off and on it. And if you try to put pressure on the point again, it's going to pull at least the Diva back. But up top, the fight commences, and Ivy dies first again. Oh, yeah, probably just charges out the window, somehow survives. Barely. I think Sinatra was hunting for that one. Could do it. Great stagger there. I am 37 out. The Defiant right now getting picked off. Valuable time getting burnt off the clock here. Well done on the side of the shock. It's so important to kill those Zarya's when they try to escape too. Resets their energy. I am 37 has already struggled with getting high energy up throughout his Overwatch League career. So anything you can to hinder him. Very good. Below three minutes left for Toronto to try to pick up the second point. Well, it seems like a, the shock have very clearly got a game plan with how to deal with this comp that the Defiant are running. Sombra, you want to touch the point? Fine. Choyobin goes immediately onto the point, and then it's a 5v5 in the shock. They show all-out aggression. I actually liked what Envy did early on, though, to put pressure on the point, get Choyobin down there to use his mobility, go back to his team and force a 6v5 with an EMP. Wasn't executed perfectly, but the idea is sound. He is there, and Toyo, been like Hogwarts, waiting for it. So, Toy now. He needs to get up to the top here to help his team out now that they know that Envy is no longer in the picture. Unless, of course, you are going to manage to get that EMP off. It's four, but Transcendence is still available. Good job from Violet. Yeah, quick reaction. Gets it off in time. There's the grab, but the sound barrier is there. Self-destruct thrown in over the top by Toyo. It's going to force the Defiant to back off. Not fully able to take advantage of the grab. Trading out the shatters though isn't gonna help things here as Super gets overwhelmed and it is gonna be Violet with the drive by Choyobin jumping into the fight as well and the Defiant not able to get the job done. I have to go back to the drawing board here, only able to hold on to the sound barrier as San Francisco cleans that up. Seems like every time I look up at the top, Violet's at 80% on transcendence. Didn't he just use it? He just used transcendence after that EMP. Yeah. And he's already got 90%. Yeah, there's a reason we're highlighting him. He's been so good for this team all year. Charging up Transcendence at 110 seems like a little bit faster than that. He's doing... But uh, as counterpart, it's hard though because Neko's been switching heroes. It's true, Neko has been switching. But I mean, just in terms of flat damage right now, Violet's done, what, four, four and a half thousand more than Neko? Yeah. And he's still like 2.5k ahead in heals as well. So Violet right now operating on a different level. Let's see what Toronto has in store here. They don't really have anything to push with. They can go slowly and hope that I'm 37 gets there on his Graviton. 
rally into after that, but right now, San Francisco still has defensive tools in their own rally, their own transcendence. They take a different angle this time. They're gonna manage. I mean, they are on the point. There's the rally from San Francisco, hoping to just crash right into the Defiant. Yeah, Roki has to use that Sombrero to try to keep Yakung alive. Uh, there's the rally coming in from Ivy, so the Defiant, a little bit of the armor working there. Violet trying to chip in to help out to remove Envy, or at least to give Choi some room to work with. Self-destruct right in the mix, but the shield was up for the Defiant. They will survive it. And an opportunity perhaps here for the Defiant to get some real progress. I have 37 needs to survive, though. Sinatra trying to get rid of him. Barely gets it. Super's looking for the Shatter right now. He's just trying to get shoulders even with his opposing main tank. Maybe crack the shield as well. Yakpunk has to back up. The bubble comes in. Still looking for it. Sound barrier is down. Super. Still the focus, but he sees his opening, sees the angle. There's the Shatter going down. Two kills through. The Defiant running out of time. They have to win, but it's all over. The Shock now gets to pick him off one after the other, and there is too far to run to get back to the point in time. The Shock will take the lead, or extend their lead in the series, two to zero. They just focus down Yakpung every chance they got. The moment he was out of it, that Shatter hits the ground. Full cleanup. This is the dominant Shock we expected to see. Part of the Elite, very clearly one of the top three teams in the league right now, and you can see why. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll hear what the halftime crew have to say about the match so far. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. The Shock have yet to lose a single map here in stage two, and it looks like they plan on keeping it that way. They lead 2-0 over the Defiant at the half. Welcome back, everybody, to halftime. Malik here, and you guys heard me mentioning on the pre-show that there were some newlyweds sitting behind me. Well, look, I'm joined by the newlyweds, Rena and Dan. Uh, so it is to my understanding that you guys decided to take your honeymoon here. Am I right about that? Yep. Yep. Okay, so I have to ask the, the you know, the popular question, why here? Why the Blizzard Arena? Uh, we play Overwatch all the time, and it is very humbling to come and see people way better than us. <laughs> I feel it, I feel it. All right, so obviously you guys are San Francisco Shock fans. I can see the jerseys. Uh, who's your favorite San Francisco Shock player? Sinatra. Sinatra, all right, what about you? I'm a support main, so I have to go with Violet. All right, and you guys feeling them? The second half to keep the, uh, the, the win streak going? For sure. All right. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, obviously the San Francisco Shock fans are loving what they're seeing, but let's see how Zoe and Josh are feeling about the first half. How are you guys feeling about it? 
Uh, we're feeling great, and so should every San Francisco shock fan. Also, congratulations! Yeah, you're getting married. So sweet. Yeah, so sweet. Uh, yeah, one player we just uh, heard it mentioned, Violet. That's the man we're gonna look at for that first half. He popped up like no other. He was uh, kind of channeling his inner Jonak for this very game. And we did see him on a variety of different heroes, but he was a standout for uh, on literally every single one he played. So he will continue his upward trajectory where he's really trying to get himself of, uh, onto this Rookie of the Year yeah. kind of board. And, and I feel really sorry for Violet actually with the Rookie of the Year award because he's going up against the entirety of the Vancouver Titans. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> People as well, but the guy's so unbelievably talented. Everyone thinks about his Zenyatta, but here were a couple of his stats for his Anna on Busan. Only played a couple of minutes. He basically only played a couple of minutes of everything because so far the game has been a little bit one-sided over here. It's but you can see, hand. yeah, you can see that in general he is pretty talented on a bunch of these different support heroes. And if it was last season, he'd definitely be in the, in the running alongside people like Jonak for that Rookie of the Year award. This year, it's gonna be tight. We have so many good new players. You're, you're right about that. Now, let's talk a little bit about Super, because we've seen him pop off on Reinhardt. We've seen him pop off on Winston. But we got to see a little <laughs> bit of a wrecking ball from the man in this match, too. How do you guys think about that? That was pretty nice. Yeah, no, and he, he yeah, he, thank you. <laughs> I, I appreciate these kind of jokes. Let's actually take a look at his stats here. Yeah, I just want to drive it home here. First, in hero damage done, yeah? Second and final blows, and in players knockback per 10, and uh, he's also first and fewest death per 10. He also, we might have to, you know, there's a bit of a caveat, we might have to mention that he, in this game, only just hit the 10 minute mark to actually make him qualify <laughs> for that board. But you know, that's a good start. I want to see more of that. I was gonna say, should we see more super on Wrecking Ball? Absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I want to see No, I want to see more. <laughs> Is he Among level yet? No way. No. <laughs> he's been taking lessons from Among for sure, but he's, he's not He's first place, level. what you talking about? This uh, numbers don't lie. He'll drop over time. Oh, okay. First, so let's talk a little bit about Hanamura, another great match great, great showing for the san francisco shock uh, me personally my personal favorite moment of that match was seeing sinatra on that song but just going crazy uh violet doing what he normally does but how was san francisco able to dominate this map so so pleasantly the way they did they look very tight as a team and even with architect coming in a guy that we haven't seen since week three of stage one so it's been a long time since they played with architect they still look just super clean they look very clean they all know what they're doing at every time they can add in a couple of different strategies like that sinatra sombra which we saw a little bit of and worked well against the Farah Mercy that Toronto Defiant were trying to run. And I think Toronto is still trying to get the grips with everything. Yeah. Like we were talking about in the pre-show, like Soy was saying, the I'm 37 and Ivy swap now seems to be a bit more of a permanent thing. And it's going to take them some time to get to grips with that and what it means for their team, as well as just working around I'm 37 because he's a brand new player and brand new to this level of competition as well. So a bit of a rebuilding stage for Toronto and a bit of a a crushing stage for Shock. They, they have yet to drop. Not everyone's a winner. You know? yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So uh, going into the second half, should the Defiant be looking to possibly bring this match back? Or should they focus more on just learning more about playing around IM37? I mean, that's the thing. It all comes down to experience. And you can't really gain experience uh, on, on such a scale from one map to another. Right. I do think that in general, the Defiant look a little bit more clean than they did in previous matches. We see that when we're looking at statistics. Yakpong isn't dying as much. The team is a little bit uh, more coordinated, but overall, they are going up against one of the juggernauts of the league, and that is San Francisco Shock. Um, this is gonna be a rough match regardless. So yeah. I think for now, just kind of focus on your own thing. You're yeah. most likely not expecting to uh, be winning any of those maps, so. What do you think, Josh? Comfortability? I think it's possible for the Defiant here to stop the win streak that the San Francisco Shock are going, yes. stop them from gaining that record. We saw NYXL lose a map in right. the previous series to the Philadelphia Fusion, but I, I agree with Zoe's point in general here that really what they should be going for is trying to tighten up that teamwork, continue that development, and see if they can get things rolling in the future. Right, right. Develop that synergy. All right, well, guys, that's going to do it for halftime. Now, Roki from the Toronto Defiant is known for two things. His colorful hair, and his Lucio play. So we sat down with the Defiant main support to get some tips on how to speed boost your team to victory at home. This is Game Set, sponsored by Omen by HP. Ooh. Roki is absolutely killing it on this Lucio. That was a great play by Roki. Our name is Park Chuseong. We game tag on Roki. Our team is Toronto Defiant. Lucio는 이제 광역 힐이랑 광역 이속이 있어가지고 아니면 난전 중에 케어하지 못한 사람들까지 다 케어할 수 있는 점에서 아주 괜찮은 캐릭터인 것 같아요.
제가 사용하는 세팅은 이제 240Hz 이상으로 사용하고 있고 